Welcome to MicroStrategy's Mobile App Developer Academy. This course is entitled, Working with Images. In this course, I will show you examples of basic image usage in a mobile document, share a few best practices, and show you an advanced use of images in a scrolling grid. This video is an introduction to using images, but there are many other Mata videos that cover advanced image usage. After this video, I highly recommend you watch Interconnectivity and Linking, Transparent Images for Navigation, or the conditional formatting videos. First things first, where should you store your images? The answer, anywhere that is accessible to your mobile server. This could be a folder in the mobile installation folder on the server, a public folder in your cloud storage solution, or a path to a corner of your corporate website host. Your decision will be based on your security and performance needs, but images should be accessible by URL if not hosted on your mobile server. As you can see, this image is hosted on the Amazon S3 web service. But you can use a relative path to an image on the mobile server, such as in this generic icon. Another basic consideration is file format. Image file format affects file size and image quality. For images based on photos, JPEG images will generally be smallest in file size. For everything else, such as logos and other digitally created graphics, PNG images provide the best quality. Here, we have one image saved in three different file formats. Notice the different sizes. It's entirely possible that you may have to make a compromise between image quality and download size. Let's get to some examples. While data is always first, you can use images in your mobile app to augment the document in basic but creative ways. Consider using symbolic images instead of text to show what a button does. It saves space and, if done right, is just as intuitive as text. Here we have a button to open a calendar or go to settings. If an image is a tappable button, ensure it is large enough and has enough space around it to be easily tappable on a mobile device. For non-retina displays, an interactive element should be at least 40 pixels by 40 pixels. For retina displays, you should double this rule of thumb. Use signals to subtly, or not so subtly, guide users to interactive elements that may not be obvious in the dashboard. Your image can be as simple as an arrow that shows what a selector affects, or an icon to show where you should tap. This brings us to layering. In this image, there is one image with a button embedded in the background. A better practice is to separate the background and add an image on top, like so. Separating the background makes future editing much easier. Notice that when I layer buttons on top, I'm free to use images and move buttons independently. In contrast, my background with embedded button must be pixel perfect the first time. This could be perfect for a well thought out app, but it is a little more difficult and less flexible to work with. Layering images with transparencies on top of other objects, such as grids and selectors, can give your document a more cohesive feel along with giving subtle signals, as mentioned earlier. Put a gradient on the edge of a scrollable area to hint that there is more to see. Here, we have a simple selector and grid that blend in with the background. By overlapping a gradient image with the edges of these objects, you can encourage users to scroll down. Here in MicroStrategy Web, let's just look at it real quick. You can see that all I did was Place a few images with gradients in them at the very edges of a grid and a selector. It's that simple. So far, I've shown you some pretty basic uses of images. But on this document are two grids that display images within them. These grids have a natural feeling scrolling ability and blend in with the document. Yet they are accomplished in two very different ways. In this grid on the right, Next to the sales column, there's actually a category metric column that has been reduced in size 
and shows icons to save horizontal space. This column is actually a metric that grabs and displays the parent category ID for each subcategory. In the report itself is a threshold that replaces the category ID with an image. To reiterate quickly, the threshold on the report in the document is based on the category metric, which has a simple expression that you can see in front of you here, and a level that just pull the category ID from the appropriate subcategory in the report. The second grid at the bottom of the document is used solely for navigation and displays images very differently. In this grid, an attribute sits on the columns and displays a specific attribute form. As you can see here, the form is defined as an HTML tag. This is so the form accurately interprets the HTML reference in a table that sits in the warehouse. Each snippet of HTML not only points to an image stored somewhere else, but also functions as a link to another document. To conclude, images and documents have a wide variety of uses, from simple backgrounds to advanced scrollable navigation elements. While data always comes first, creative use of images can make your document stand out. Thank you for watching this MATIC course on working with images, and of course, don't forget to watch our more advanced videos on using images.